Okay, we're going to look at creating a gel button, or a glass button, in Adobe Illustrator. And uh, one of the best reasons to create this kind of art in Adobe Illustrator is because it's a vector. And uh, long story short, vector is good. Um, <laughs> if you don't know the background of vector, just you're gonna have to trust me on that one. Vector is good. And um, if you do know the background of it, you know vector is good. Um, but this is the button we're going to make, and... We're going to start right now. So I'm going to minimize this. And this one, there's no download. We're just going to start from scratch. So you can create a new document with this 400. Height is 150. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to zoom back in a little bit. Just like that so you can see pretty easily. And first thing we need to do is on layer 1, just create a rectangle using the rectangle tool. Default, white fill, black stroke. Select that black stroke and get rid of it. Select the white fill. Come up to your swatches palette. And grab this black to white gradient. Now, grab the gradient palette, which I have right here. And change the angle to 90 degrees. And now we're going to change the color. We're going to use this dark spearmint green over by the black. Okay. And we're going to use this very bright lime green for the other, whoops, for the other end of the gradient. And all I'm doing to create that gradient is simply dragging colors from my swatches palette right into the gradient palette and just dropping them there. And to get rid of the old colors, I'm just grabbing them and pulling away, and it gets rid of them. Very easy to do. Alright, so there's the base of our button. Now, if we open up our layers palette, we can see we have this path. We're going to duplicate this layer, okay? We're going to select it, and then we're going to select our direct, or not our direct selection tool, just our regular selection tool. And we're going to shrink this down to about half the size, okay, of this. And we're going to fill it, well, with white. Go to Swatch Palette, select white, just like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the shape, so we're going to hit Edit, Copy. Now, we're going to create a mask here, and if you don't know how to mask, I've got a tutorial on masking. You can go watch that. Um, if you don't know how to mask yet, you can either go watch that right now um, and then come back to this right here. Or you can just follow along what I say and uh, do it. <laughs> so in the transparency palette, double click on this spot next to this white area. By the way, I have that shape selected. Double click there and that shape will disappear. And that shape will disappear just like that. Now hit edit, paste in front. Remember we copied that little bit before and there we go we're pasting it in front now we're gonna fill this with a black to white gradient and what we need to do is grab our gradient palette right here and we're gonna switch the angle to negative 90 oops no just 90 and we're gonna push up the amount of white that comes in so we're gonna we're gonna grab this little diamond slider on our gradient slider and we're gonna pull it toward the black okay just about right there. I've got it right around 65% on the little location text box there. I'm going to move that gradient out of the way. That gradient dialog box out of the way. Oops. Select that transparency palette. And we're going to lower the transparency to something like 90. Uh, make it 95. That's better. 95 is good. And now I'll just select this white square to get back into out into regular editing mode. Because what we were just editing there was the opacity mask. Like I said, if you don't understand opacity masks, I have a tutorial on opacity masks. Go watch that, please. Okay, so we've just created the glow. Now what we need to do is create the shine. So what we need to do is create a new... No, we don't need to create a new sub layer. Grab, just grab the rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom out one click and I'm going to drag with the rounded rectangle tool until I get a shape like that. I'm going to select that shape. Well actually I'm going to select this path here which is the button base. Okay, I've just selected it in the layers palette and I'm going to copy that. That's Commander Control C. Now I'm going to come up here to this rounded rectangle and I'm we're going to add a mask to this. Transparency palette, double click next to that thumbnail. Now hit Commander Control F that pastes in place. You can see that right here under ob uh, edit, paste in front. I'm thinking paste in place as in flash, but that's actually paste in front in Illustrator. Now make this white. All right, we have to make this a black to white gradient as well. 
drag the radiant box in, and we're going to rotate this to 90, which I once again have gotten wrong. It's negative 90. Someday I'm going to get that completely right. And we're going to drag the black up a little further than that. Maybe something like that. Drag the white down a little bit. Just like that. That looks good. Okay. Drag the gradient dialog box out of the way. And, oops, actually select, yeah, select that rounded rectangle. We're going to pull it down a little bit. Uncheck, un unlink it from the mask by hitting that little, just a little chain icon in between those two thumbnails. Disconnect it for a second. So I just want to pull this down a little lower. It depends on how you've placed yours. I don't quite like the placement of mine. And then link it up again. Now, one thing you're going to notice is there's a little bit of overlap in there. I don't like that. I'm going to select this lower area, and I know exactly why it's happening. And it's a little kind of quirky thing about Adobe Illustrator that you may not know. Matter of fact, you probably don't know. But when you use a black-to-white gradient or a gradient with black in it, the black does not actually completely take away the artwork like it should be because the black is up here. And if you know about masks, black hides. 100% black hides 100%. So that should be truly transparent. Well, it's not, but this is 100% black. I mean, here's my color palette, and that is 100% black. Well, the problem is, when you view, the, view this in grayscale, it says it's 100%, but Illustrator, for some reason, does not read it as 100%. Now, there might be something I'm missing. Maybe there is. Maybe it's just some weird quirk in Adobe Illustrator. But if you switch to RGB or hue saturation brightness, you get truly 100% black. Watch, watch the glow on your screen as you do that. You're going to see that now it fades out completely. So, just a little thing, a little actually tip for you when you're using gradients as masks. Okay? So, what we need to do now is create a little uh, shadowing for the center of this. That's the word I'm looking for, shadowing. So we're going to grab the rectangle tool again, and we're just going to draw a rectangle right through the middle, just like that, and we're going to give it a black fill. All right, now what we're going to do is apply an effect to this, and this is going to be a distortion effect. Go to Distort Roughen, and in the Roughen dialog box, hit Preview. We want, first off, the points to be smooth, and we want the detail to be reduced uh, pretty drastically. Uh, we'll say 5 for the detail. And then size, we will say 3. And when we do that, we may actually see we want to add more detail. But no, I think that's pretty good. So we're going to hit OK. So that, real quick, my size is 3%. That's relative. Detail is 5 inches. And, uh, or 5-in. <laughs> and points are set to smooth. So hit OK. And now we have this blobby-looking thing going through the center. Select that. And we need to apply a mask to that. So double-click. And once again, we're going to paste in front because we still have that square selected. You can see there, if you're following along our little uh, thumbnail, you can see the green fading into green rectangle up here. We're going to give that a white fill. And actually, we're going to give this a black to white gradient fill. But what we're going to do, whoops, we're going to select that. Make sure you keep it selected. We are going to rotate this by 90 degrees. Okay. We're going to drag the black to the middle, and we're going to drag out another point. I just did that by clicking. You, anywhere you click, you automatically get a new point. Select that color stop at the very right-hand side, just by clicking on it, and then come up here and select white. And I just messed myself up. You actually have to drag white to there. Okay, so there we have this black in the middle, which looks like it's doing horrible things, but it's really not. It's not. Um... We need to come over here and convert this to RGB, so it really is true, 100% black. And now what we need to do is get out of the opacity mask mode, which I'm out of now, just by clicking on that thumbnail. I'm in opacity mask mode now. Now I'm not. So select the artwork and come up to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to apply about a 3 pixel, whoops, 3, not 32, 3 pixel Gaussian Blur. And you know what? I think it needs a little more. Let's try... Ooh, six. Let's double it. And that's a lot better. I want to make it a little bit smaller. The actual effect, whoops. You know what? We're just going to leave it like that. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity down to something like 35. So we, let's make it 25. Yeah, there we go. Just so we've got some 
sort of shading, okay? So it's just sort of like a uh, subconscious uh, effect, you know? People aren't really going to notice it, you know? It's not going to be something you're going to get comments on, like, hey, I love the little shadow you have going on in the back, but it's something that your gel buttons don't quite look right without. So one last thing we're going to do is select the complete background of the button, this path right here. Come up to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and we're going to apply a little drop shadow to it. Hit Preview, and I want the blur to be about 1, and my X and Y offsets both to be 1. Now we'll make the blur 2.5, and the opacity 30. You know, make that opacity 25. Oh, I changed my mind a lot, don't I? Okay, and there we go. You have a button, a nice gel button, which I will zoom in on, and very few layers. And of course, if you'd like to change the color of it, all you have to do is come down here to this and change the color of these gradient stops. For example, I can grab this blue, switch it right into there, and i got to find a light blue, which I'll just drag, actually drag another blue over, and I'm going to come over here, I'm going to grab my color palette, and I'm just going to lighten that blue right up. Okay? And you have a blue button. Okay? So, really, it's a nice easy way to create gel slash glass buttons in Adobe Illustrator. So, that's it for this one. Uh, go check out tutvid.com for more tutorials. And, uh, until next time, have fun, and I'll see you around.